So I'm going to explain to you how Lyme disease happens. It starts with the black-legged tick. Now about 470,000 people have been diagnosed with the disease and are currently being treated. That's according to the CDC. The symptoms of Lyme disease include fever, muscle aches, fatigue, bullseye rash um, that happens between three and 30 days after the bite. Some people also report uh, brain fog. So what happens? The tick happens to sit on a blade of grass. This is called questing, which I feel is an unfairly cool verb to give to a little vampire insect. So initially, it is not the tick's fault. It's a lot to do with the environment of the forest. It drinks blood. It drinks blood from deer, and it drinks blood from mice, primarily. So this is not to scale. Thank goodness, that'd be terrifying. So the tick will bite the deer, and the deer potentially is infected. The same is true for mice. Mice are particularly uh, likely to be infected with the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. All right, so what does it look like? I'm gonna zoom in here as if you were looking through a microscope. These are pink squiggles on purpose. These bacteria are literally spiral shaped. So it's called a spirochete bacteria and it lives in the population of forest animals that the tick bites and consumes their blood. Okay, so now the bacteria has been transferred from the woodland animals to the tick. So this is one scenario. There are other scenarios. The most common bacteria is called Borrelia burgdorferi. It's the most common Lyme disease causing bacteria. The second most common is Borrelia maonii. Now, this used to be that only one bacteria was transferred during Lyme disease. But the truth is right now, co-infections are happening more and more frequently, meaning that it's not one bacteria, it's a combination of bacteria and parasites, which yes, is worse. So approximately 28 to 45% can have co-infections. Now I just pointed out um, what I'm gonna show you. There's like a brown squiggle, which is a parasite that, there it is, um, Babesia microti. Now a parasite suppresses the immune system, which can make treating Lyme disease very difficult, and I'll cover this in a future video, the way that a parasite suppresses the immune system. Um, the other thing are the pink dots I pointed out earlier. They are Anaplasma phagocytophilum, and I'll fit it in here at the bottom. That's a mouthful, right? Anaplasma phagocytophilum. Um, so that's an additional type of bacteria. It's circular shaped, not spiral shaped. So all of these combined can make treating Lyme disease much more difficult. All right, so the Borrelia and the Anaplasma can get treated with antibiotics, and the parasite requires a different medication altogether. And the Babesia also potentially prevents your body from destroying and identifying the bacteria types, which again I'll cover in greater detail in a future video. So let's get these out of the way and talk about a better case scenario. Taking that blade of grass with me. Okay, so on the bright side, you have between 36 and 48 hours to find these and remove them. You need to remove them with tweezers. There used to be other methods saying, put ethanol on first, um, put a little flame underneath them. But now they think that that will actually make the tick vomit up the bacteria. So putting ethanol on might actually freak it out and it'll spit the blood and bacteria into you. So now it's just tweezers. Removal is just tweezers and then afterwards put on the ethanol. Yep, to clean up anything that might have been transferred. So as long as you do this, you probably won't get Lyme disease. But let's go over what would happen if you missed a tick. So the treatment is antibiotics for three to four weeks. The type of antibiotics depends on whether or not you have a single infection with Borrelia or a co-infection. So let's go over the options. The first line of defense is called amoxicillin. That's pretty standard. Um, your kid probably got this when they had an ear infection. It works great um, when it's a single infection. So if you have a co-infection, you might need doxycycline um, or you might need ceftriaxone. So these are more called like second generation antibiotics. 
and they're more likely to work on multiple types of bacteria. And if you have a really bad infection or an antibiotic resistant infection, which is happening more and more lately, you will need to be hospitalized and potentially given vancomycin. This is for severe cases only, um, not the average case. So vancomycin is going to attack the bacteria, not necessarily the parasite. Um, but yeah, vancomycin is incredibly effective, but I do have to say, as I was getting my PhD every year, they would tell us, they would sit us down, tell all the students, we don't have enough antibiotic options at the moment. And big pharma really needs to start spending more money on discovering new antibiotics so we don't run into this wall where we can't treat antibiotic resistant infections. So a <laughs> little bit of a tangent, but it is important to consider these things. So vancomycin is meant to be a, a last resort or somebody who went in for their amoxicillin treatment, went home, and then started to feel the muscle aches, the fatigue, the brain fog, and then go back and get re-diagnosed with Lyme disease. So you might hit it with the amoxicillin or the doxycycline the first time, and if it doesn't get cleared, hit it with vancomycin the second time. I do know a few people that have um, had this happen to them. All right, so the next video, I'm going to cover what happens to the immune response and parasites.